Pride Week? <laughs> Pride Week. <laughs> Hello. What's up, guys? Welcome to the McInnes Marketing Minute, Minute. Pride Minute. Week edition. PW edition. Pride Week edition. Happy Pride to everyone out there. Jay is back. Jay is back. We're back on the rooftop. It's a good week. The weather's beautiful here. It's the long weekend coming up. Hope you all have some awesome plans for the long weekend. We are actually going away to a lake house, huh? 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 <laughs> yeah. Team retreat team retreat so guys thank you for joining us this week today we are talking about a subject which is usually hidden in the shade of what the usual gossip is about when it comes to the real estate market in vancouver i mean jay talk to us what, what's what's most of the things you hear in the real estate market about the real estate market in vancouver right now everyone harps on sellers yeah we've talked about it our fair share sellers adjusting to the um, current market. unrealistic expectations um, pricing like it was 2017. Seller buyer disconnect. So on and so forth is the common uh, trend in the market right now of mm -hmm. deals not coming together. However, how many groups does it take to put a deal together? DOS. Neat. We did this before. <laughs> we did do this before, so the people know. Yeah. So there's always two parties. There's a buyer and a seller, of course. And in this market, there's a lot of talk on the sellers adjusting uh, to current market conditions. And that is, by the way, we're not saying that's not the case. That's that very common. Very, very common it's, and very, very true. true. a lot of the time. There's still a large disconnect. But when it comes to a disconnect, there are two parties involved and there is also a disconnect from buyers. I think we've seen pretty heav heavenly, heavenly, nope. pretty heavily, heavily. Um, over, I want to say just over the past year, year and a half maybe, about some, some interesting tactics, which we, we won't get into too much, but we've discussed from buyers based on this correcting market. And so we're going to shed a bit of light on the disconnect from the buyer side when it comes to, to purchasing a property in, in today's market. They need a kick in the behind. Okay. <laughs> Happy pride. <laughs> um, yeah, so <laughs> you start. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> so in reality, guys, there's actually never been a better time in the last few years to purchase real estate in Vancouver. The average price of homes has gone down. The inventory has gone up, record yep. highs. Uh, and it's also extremely cheap to borrow money or much easier to borrow money. And they also just had a very minimal change to the stress test as well. And rates, as you said before, have come down this year already. So you're Monies, actually, yes. you Go. are spoiled for choice, we want to say. And so it's actually one of the best times. However, of course. And not to mention the climate of the deal well, is you have substantially time. less pressured. You have time. You can do you your have inspections. The flexibility of your doing finance. subjects. Yeah. So it's a perfect storm to purchase. However, however, sales are at all time lows. You know, we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago why the all-time low thing doesn't matter however you do need to appreciate sales are low so it's not just sellers with their expectations of yesterday up here that are, are causing that there's also a disconnect on the buyer side and, and their expectations of tomorrow yeah so we hear a lot of the times um sellers are selling their place they need to adjust to the market conditions they're looking for yesterday's prices then on the other side we get buyers who are putting in offers based on tomorrow's prices or where they believe tomorrow's prices will be. And so that creates an even further disconnect. If you have a seller looking for yesterday's price and a buyer looking for tomorrow's price, see that big gap in the middle of my hands? That's the disconnect right there. This bad boy. Yeah, and like Ben said, everyone focuses on sellers right now as we have, but buyers being the other side of the equation can't just blanket come in and say buyer's market it's softening i'm offering this if you don't like it take it or leave it but you can you just won't be successful exactly so again it comes back to are you actually wanting to purchase something um so taking today's market value without any pressure from where you believe the market's if you believe the market's going down 10 percent in the next 12 months wait 12 months yeah but you can't expect to come in and say i'm giving you 10 percent because due to these economic circumstances that I believe in, uh, your product's gonna be worth 10% less in a year. Don't be stupid, 
take it now. You can't, you can do it, but you can't expect success. You can't expect to be well received yes. on the other side. Especially, in, and ironically enough, like it's everyone's entitled to their own opinion, of course, but if you if you're following up, we've had a lot of conversations with people recently who are saying that they actually think the market's going to take a turn based on what's happening with the economic situation in Hong Kong, places like that. So should that be the case? Are they then going to up their prices by 10 percent prior to that happening? No, they're not going to get success. It's the, the same sort of thing. And so you can't be you can't be bidding or offering based on what you believe the market to be. If you're looking to successfully buy or sell real estate in today's market, you need to be going on today's market value. Yeah. And these outside kind of futuristic facts of uh, driving direction of the market. And like Ben said, obviously the Hong Kong thing we're hearing a lot about today, um, a, a looming recession we've heard a lot about, uh, economics in the US, so on and so forth. Everyone's gonna build their case on why it's gonna be cheaper tomorrow if you're a buyer and why it's gonna be more expensive tomorrow if you're a seller. But at the end of the day, you have to focus on today only or mm -hmm. wait. Huh. If you're a seller, you think it's gonna be 10% higher in a year, then don't list for mm -hmm. another 12 months because you're just gonna be frustrated with, at best, the market price offers you get today. Yeah. and. If you're a buyer as well, make sure you don't fall into the trap of, of doing that when you put an offer through. We've spoken about it a lot, so we won't go into it too much, but about using today's comparables. Make sure that you're not putting an offer through, it gets rejected or maybe countered or not even countered, and you're left there stood, stood screaming why they didn't accept, the market's down, it's gone through a correction. Do they not understand where the market's going? Because if you've offered nowhere near today's market value, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, you're going to get that whether it's them, another property, another property, another property. And we've seen it in the last few weeks with a couple of homes that we've sold. We had a few offers completely unjustified, 50, 60, 70 grand below asking price. And the Just, asking price being the asking price at being a justifiable market value. Yep, yeah, today's market value. They've just come through with no justification other than we're looking at the way the market is going. Okay, well, that, that's great good for you but no we're going to move on and then lo and behold what has happened with those same places they've just sold at ask or very close to ask because yeah. they're based on today's market value so you're only shooting yourself in the foot because you're going to come through with that kind of tactic and somebody will eventually actually come through and offer market value because they understand that and you're just going to kind of waste your time going back and forth on something which isn't going to be successful yeah and i think uh, a lot of people out there that Again, it's, it's fabricated, fabricated fictional beliefs of w what's going. People are trying to pick the bottom. And if you're using that, now as, as a buyer, you can't expect a seller to look at the market from your skewed point of view because you want something for cheaper that they have. But as a seller, also understand that it doesn't take six days, seven days anymore to sell. And if you're listed for 30 days, that doesn't mean that if you've justified your number, that you're, you're, you're way off or We're anything We're not talking like about that. sellers today. We're talking about buyers. Okay, I'm sorry. Buyers. That's a whole other blog. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that yeah. pretty much wraps up our point. Without going on and on saying the same thing, Jay McInnes' favorite tactic. <laughs> we will see you guys next week. Thank you for tuning in. As always, drop us a follow and comments are welcomed. Ciao for now. I'm not talking about sellers. See you later. Ah!